talk about American history, you have to start at the beginning. The United States simply started as a group of British people that were trying to assert their rights as British. But the more things happen, the more these citizens of the colonies started to say, maybe if we're going to be treated like foreigners, we should start acting like it. So in 1776, a group of colonists came together and signed this. This is a copy of the original Declaration of Independence. This is the certificate that in our minds says we are an independent country and don't have to answer to anybody. Many famous Americans signed it, including John Hancock, whose signature is very big, right in the middle, big enough so that the king could see it without his glasses. Now, Great Britain obviously did not want to give us up so quickly, and the American Revolutionary War followed. In 1783, we were officially recognized as our own separate, independent country. And from there, more than 200 years later, we have continued to write that great story that is the United States. All men are created equal, except for approximately 4 million people living in the United States. Those people, African American slaves. For years, people have tried to figure out what do we do? Do we end slavery? Do we expand it? Do we leave it the way it is? All of these issues were building and building and building until finally the election of 1860, when Abraham Lincoln was elected the next president. Upon his election, the state of South Carolina seceded, left the United States and were followed very quickly by five other states. And as the days and weeks progressed, more states left, leading to what we could know today as the American Civil War, a war fought for the future of slaves and would they in turn become American citizens. Abraham Lincoln became the representation of what we can do when we see people that are being mistreated. So Abraham Lincoln has worked very hard to be able to bring equality to slaves and to end this horrifying nature of slavery. But if you were a woman, there still wasn't anybody fighting for you. So if you were a female in the United States, these were some of the things that you were not able to do. Without a man, you were not able to sign contracts or even inherit your own property. You're expected to be a good wife. Be a, good, uh, be a good mother, and at the same time, you better obey your husbands no matter what. The Civil War was just about to come to an end. Abraham Lincoln seemed confident that the country would be restored and the root of all evil slavery would be eliminated. On April 14, 1865, he took what he felt was going to be a well-deserved evening off by taking in a show at the nearby Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately for him, John Wilkes Booth, a popular actor at the time, had other plans. During their show, our American cousin, John Wilkes Booth, crept into the box that Abraham Lincoln was sitting in, and with one single shot, ended Abraham Lincoln's life. Abraham Lincoln was sitting in this very chair here. Lincoln was taken across the street where he was pronounced dead a few hours later and with him the hopes and dreams of a more equal nation. In the 19-teens, it was time for women to step up. Women like Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Alice Paul began protesting openly out in the streets, sometimes right even in front of the president's house. All of this would lead to the passing of the 19th Amendment, which finally gave women the right to vote.
segregation was the law of the land in the United States for about 100 years after the Civil War. Everything was segregated, including public city busing. One day on December 1st, 1955, an African-American woman named Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on this very bus in that seat right across the way there. Rosa Parks' subsequent arrest was more than what the people of Montgomery could stand. And for about a year, they refused to ride this bus and all other buses in Montgomery until they were desegregated, which they would be about a year later in 1956. This bus represents what people can do when they see a wrong and make a point to right it. Now, I was a good student. Anything that the teacher asked me to do, I did it. If you were a student in the United States in the 1950s, one of the things that teachers might ask you to do would be to duck and cover. Now, duck and cover drills were things that were meant to practice Americans getting in the habit of preparing for what might happen if there was a nuclear war. In the event that the Soviet Union or anybody was choosing to use their nuclear weapons against us, well, we wanted our kids to be ready and wanted our kids to be prepared for that. So three buzzes would go off, the kids would go under their desk, put their head down, and cover their neck with their hands. That was part of being a student in the 1950s. The threat of nuclear war was always real always there. One of the biggest contributions to the United States that is provided all throughout the world is the idea of a presidency, an elected leader. And John F. Kennedy truly represented that when he was elected president in 1960. He represented not only the American ideals, but he also represented youth, excitement, enthusiasm for, for the next generation. On November 22nd, 1963, President Kennedy was riding in this car in Dallas, Texas, when a lone gunman by the name of Lee Harvey Oswald opened fire, killing Kennedy and killing a lot of the dreams that he had for the United States with him. This car came to the Henry Ford Museum as a part of a loan from Ford Motor Company, and it stands today representing hope, enthusiasm, optimism, and what could happen at one fateful moment.